Hey guys, this week on the AwesomeCast, we talk about all the fun stuff that was announced last week in advance of the iPhone. This week, some alternative uh, tablets, a uh, very alternative helmet, and uh, all this and more. AwesomeCast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Awesome Cast 118. We're ready to go. It's Sorg, Mike Sorg. That's my name, right here in the studio in Pittsburgh, PA, uh, here at uh, uh, Sorgatron Media. Uh, uh, let's let's get right with it. Uh, I'm with the couch. Uh, with me is in the studio, uh, uh, Chaji. <laughs> wow. I get to go first. Insert coin to begin. dot com. Wow. Hi. I'm on bath salts. Oh, eat your face. Also, come back at us is. Rob De La Creta. What? Is my frame frozen, or is that just me? <laughs> Your frame's frozen. Your brain <laughs> oh, no. of some <laughs> sort. I don't know why. You're deep in thought. You're just holding in your rage from that fancy link that I sent. That was the three seconds after <laughs> after Sorg cut me off saying something incredibly inappropriate right before the show. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like literally half a breath off of a word we don't say loudly on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and he dove right into it. Which one? And, you know, that one. Is it the sh word? Is it the f word? It's it's the V word with potpourri. Oh, the I, V potpourri. Oh. Okay. Oh. And yeah. we painted the picture. <laughs> uh, also with us joining us is, is Frank Chenoweth of InsertCoinToBegin.com sucking on a big fat stogie. Don't yep. say it like that. No. <laughs> that, that, that sounds awful. That no? sounds okay. awful. Terrible. That, that makes bad. it sound like I need some sort of weird potpourri over here now. <laughs> oh, another kind of potpourri. Um, how you doing? You're one. You're employed, I think, since the last time you've been here. Yes, I am. I have an excellent job. Love it. It's fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Good. That's the awesome cast bump. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we guys. We now get ten percent of your pay. Exactly. This is, we got to fund the podcast somehow, For right? The first six months. Um. So yeah, this is the awesome cast where we talk tech, uh, social media, internet things that we think are awesome and sometimes less than awesome. Um. And you, you can check us out. We're at awesomecast.com. Uh, tweet us at awesomecast. Uh, check us out. Uh, check us out on Facebook on the Google Plus as well. And, uh, and of course, join us here, here every Tuesday uh, around about 7 p.m. Eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com, live.awesomecast.com. Go there. If you are in the Justin TV right now, well, well, hopefully you're here live so you at least see a live video, um, or you're very, very lonely. Also, you might be lonely because we're not using the Justin TV t chat anymore. Uh, we are actually um, using uh, something different that is embedded in the... Uh, Sorgatron Media website. It, it's something new. It, it, it's, it should be a lot easier. You don't have to create a new account. If you're on Facebook, if you're on Twitter, and I think there might be another option in there too, uh, you can jump right in there. And I think it had Foursquare in there. It had Foursquare? Really? I, I, I'm being dead serious. I think I saw Foursquare in there. I, I just went real quick because I was running late, but yeah. Yeah, it's There's um, it's it, Facebook and Twitter. It's like the stylish. It, I think it's called the stylish uh, HTML5 chat or something like that by Rumble Fish. I think it was. Um, I, I, it's something different. We're testing for another project, and I'm like, I'm like, let's throw it in there. I've been wanting a new chat, anyways. And uh, if you <laughs> if you want, uh, apparently you can go to the page, hit the QR button at the bottom, and do your QR code thing, and it will pop up as an HTML5 chat on your mobile device. But you can't well, actually do that. You're going to have to screaming that goats on your phone. Uh, Wait, <laughs> no. What's no screaming goats? What was that, Rob? Well, you can't actually. You're not just going to like take a picture of a QR code because no phones have that built in, really. I mean, there's a handful, but chances yeah, are you don't have yeah, one. Yeah, so I know. You I, should go to an app store before you think about doing that because that's the only way it's going to make it practical. Also, your... punch yourself in the face for thinking about it. That's was, true, too. I was going to say, yeah. ultimately, don't scan the QR code. Yeah, just don't. Now, does it work if you just go to live.sorgatronmedia.com? Is that how you got there, uh, Rob? That's yeah, you can there. actually, if you want to use your brain, you can just go to it on the browser on your mobile device. There's a little button. And you just hit the button. Hit the button. Hit the button. That's the rule. That's the uh, that's the moral of tonight's show already. Hit the button. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, we already got a bunch of people in there. Russell, Fan, Miss Bossy, No Pants, uh, Chick Chris, 
um, and the Silent Ninja are in there uh, already. Uh, so uh, let, let's get into it. Well, first of all, uh, Frank, let's 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 uh, address your uh, fancy of the week. Yep. Maybe that should be a segment, fancy of the week by uh, by Fuzz One. You're so fired. <laughs> what am I looking at here if I'm on a video wait, version of the show? Wait, who's fired? Um, sword. Oh. Okay. Oh man. Not the guy submitting the fancy links. No, the man approving the fancy links. <laughs> mm, I, I don't know if I can approve of this thing. What am I looking at, Frank? You're looking at an air conditioned shoe. By hydrogen. That's all I got. <laughs> it's all I got. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is obviously something functional. Um I, I know some people that should be required by law to wear this. Mm-hmm. But I don't know how that legislation is going to go. Man, I don't know. It'd be great, you know, to have these after you know you're at Kennywood and you got you know splashed by the Pittsburgh Plunge instead of being squishy and and having that smell when you get home is just taken care of. This is a step towards the Back to the Future Two drying jacket. No, no. You see, you got to think ahead of that. This is a step towards the Iron Man suit because that thing has to be air conditioned somehow. Look at that. That's the beginning to an Iron Man suit. Wow. Yeah. Your thoughts, Rob? <laughs> nope. No? <laughs> this isn't happening? Nope, not happening. <laughs> Is it because it's on Fancy? Uh, it's, there's several levels of bad things <laughs> happening here. I'm just not going to support any of them. Okay. Um, now on to things that matter. Uh, well, at least a little bit. This is a uh, kind of in uh, Chachi's wheelhouse. This is a, I, I asked uh, Silent Ninja, my brother, uh, the Silent Ninja sword. Um, he's a uh, he's pretty uh, great in the video game stuff, and and uh, he's something was announced and uh, was released yesterday as a beta on the PC version of Steam uh, called Big P Picture. Apparently, if you're one of those ingenuity engine. One of those people that uh, <laughs> hook, hook your uh, uh, computer, desktop computer, up to your television to to play video games and happen to use Steam and everything. This is for you. It's it's called like I said, it's called Big P Picture. It's kind of a version of Steam that will. Um, it's formatted for using on your t on your on your TV using like a a, a console controller. Uh, like an Xbox controller, which of course you can hook right up to a PC and use. Um, there's a special keyboard that apparently, uh, uh, you know, that'll use that functionality of like using an Xbox controller to make it easier to type. Um, I guess I haven't been able to use it because it, it popped up and it's 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 PC only right now, and I'm of course on the Mac platform. Um, but we did get from the Silent Ninja uh, a, a small report on it. Um, let me pull that up here. Oh, I gotta get rid of the air conditioned shoe. Um, big picture, Valve's answer to, to gaming on the TV for Steam started its beta yesterday. Uh, it takes all the features of Steam and streamlines them into one big screen in your living room, making everything readable and easy to use from using uh, just the controller. Uh, it does this by first having three screens you can switch between using the triggers on the controller or clicking their buttons in the lower corners of the screen. The main screen consists of the store, your library, community, the standards there. Uh, which so far, uh, contain, uh, oh, which the community only contains your friends list so far. It's beta, so they're probably working everything in. Uh, the right screen is friends. This uh, screen is mostly allows you uh, to communicate with friends and groups with your yeah, the, 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 the design. And yeah, it's designed with the controller in mind. Um, so, I mean, and, and he goes on a bit, and of course, the, the idea is this is probably, uh, you know, the rumored Steam Box console. Uh, this might be kind of a test for that. Because, I mean, really, how many people were hooking up their computer to just to their television these days? Is that a thing now? It's a lot easier, I know, since HDMI is pretty prevalent. Uh, Chachi, do you see ever see anything like that in your groups? Chachi's the hell? Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I was trying to beat this level in balloons. Um, yeah, uh, I do it. Yeah? Yeah, I don't have a monitor on my desk. Okay. I, I have my, my flat screen TV. And you're rocking like an Xbox controller or something hooked up to your PC? Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. USB adapters. Uh, Everything works. I guess you can think a lot of people, uh, you know, like your situation, you have all that stuff in your bedroom, so that's all that's all accessible. Right. You know? Um, or, or you just have like an extra TV or something you're hooked up to. Right. So the, the, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Or even just, just have more of a lean back experience, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. What, what do we, what do you think of this, Frank? 
Um, well, being someone who regularly has a computer tied to a TV, I think that's a good idea. And I, I, uh, I don't know. You're kind of mumbling quickly there, but I believe that, um, like how you said about how you have like the screen to show the game and then you have like your friends list on one side. Like, I, I think that that, like to have that kind of social aspect worked into it, I think that that'd be really cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that has a lot of promise. And like, I, I do think that with how many computers come standard with an HDMI output, yeah. that it's, it, it's almost going to become typical to see a computer tied to a TV now rather than a monitor. Like, I, I think that that's going to be like the next big trend, like with those kind of things, like just to ditch the monitor and just use the TV because I do it all the time. They're basically the same thing now. Yeah. You know, um, especially with resolution and everything. Um, I, th- I think, and also the other thing considering here, like most people, I think, have laptops. And if you're buying a PC laptop, HDMI is, I think, pretty standard. My wife has one on hers, and she had a pretty much a cheapy uh, gateway from, you know, just like two years ago. I mean, just in, in between that and any TV you've bought recently probably has a side thing that has an extra HDMI that you can just plug anything in. So yeah. it's just like, oh, I just throw the laptop up there, plug in my uh, wireless thing for the Xbox controller, and we're good to go. We're on the big picture, and, you know, here we go. Um, so it's more of a portable thing. Like it's not required, uh, to, to get into your game interface. So, and if they get people used to this and they do go to the rumored console, that just makes it easier to make the transition. They've tested the interface before they've even made the big step. So, um, you know, and plus what we're hearing about them, they're going to, uh, Linux. Um, I don't know what, have they announced anything with, I know they are very anti windows eight. Have they talked a lot about how they're handling that? I mean, are we just, I mean, they're, they're just going to have the desktop client. I guess they're not going to do a Metro version. I don't know. Can they at this point? No, they can't. They can? No. Why? Why? It would kill them. It would, why? They're a computer business. Mm-hmm. They're going to focus mainly on Mac? No. No, Metro. Instead of the desktop version. Oh, I was only half listening. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. So um, I warned you before the show that this was going to happen. <laughs> uh, don't don't get Silent Ninja's in the chat room. He says he wouldn't be surprised if they make their own OS. Steam? It would no. Like is there like a pure gaming OS? You think? No. no? Nope. No. Like flat? No. No. Yeah. Yeah. It, no, no. It was. The I majority. bet a lot of money on that not happening ever. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, with yeah, the majority I, I'm of with you, but I, I think that it would be interesting to see it, like how they would go about doing it. But all in all, it, it's not going to happen. I don't think. No, no. Basically, you're looking at well, like like put the pieces together. We're going to standardize the operating system of a set of hardware to optimize it for gaming. Oh crap! We just built a console. <laughs> That's Isn't true. That weird. Or unless we do some kind of weird hybrid thing where it's. You, you bring your own hardware, you know? Like, I mean, why couldn't you just make Steam like a version of Ubuntu Linux that just is Steam? This is my gaming platform. Um, you know, maybe there's a new form. Because why go half-heartedly? At that point, you're, like, sort of half-brewing a version of Ubuntu to play a game. Oh, wait, let me mute my mic. I have a helicopter overhead. Frank's getting buzzed. Um, yes, maybe those cigars aren't quite American. Um, yes, uh... I don't know. It, it, it's, it's interesting. It, they're really kind of throwing a lot of stuff out here. I, I stumbled on um, their, what do they call it? Steam. Steamworks, where there seems to be a lot of experimental stuff going on. Uh, like, and they're talking about more of their out of box, big picture stuff, microtransactions. I guess it's more of the business side of it. They just launched Greenlight, which, uh, Chachi, I've been following Greenlight. I'm not sure if I entirely uh, understand the concept. I, I think you guys have been reporting on it, actually. Greenlight is the same concept as uh, how movie studios decide what movies get made. Okay. Uh, that's where the term come from comes from. Yeah. Only in Steam's world, it's now their users that are going to decide which games get published on their system. Are we talking indie titles? Yeah. Okay. So like, like super meat boys and the, and the fezes and, and whatever. No, more, uh, more like, um, uh, home brewers. Like just one guy sitting at home has an idea. It has a game. game. Like, yeah. um, like the stuff we see on let's play that like you guys, the, like the, the catapult, 
the the kitty catapult. Right. That the, type uh, of stuff. the 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 what was the other game the uh, the the impossibly hard one that you guys had a few weeks ago. Oh, I don't even remember the name. That of That super it. long title one. Yeah, that's screw like that. Yeah. Or, or I the, remember that one. I don't know the title. Yeah, screw that game. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it, it's a way for it, it takes the power out of the uh, publisher's hands now and mm-hmm. puts it into the audience's hands because now uh, it's the people saying, "I like the concept of that guy's game. Mm-hmm. I want you to make that game." And so, I mean, it follows the entire. They could fire the entire, follow the entire process um, from start to finish, and uh, with enough votes, the game will be released on Steam. It's good instead of uh, leaving it up to Steam's employees. So they democratized what games come in, yeah, a bit more. That's really cool. It's another. It's another option. Uh, for developers, and we're seeing a lot of innovation with stuff you know that is leaking through with smaller developers, independent developers, uh, you know, like with the Xbox, like all that stuff, you know, featured on like the uh, indie uh, indie indie game, the movie uh, that that came out a little bit ago. So um, uh, those guys whine too much. <laughs> the guys on that game or on that movie, yeah. Like everybody, I thought it was just the Fez guy. You had a problem. They're all whiners. Yeah. Oh, they took too much money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody wants their cut, you know. It's like, well, if you're on that platform, Steam is, is Steam's going to want or Valve's going to want their cut for the for the Steam thing, you know. Yeah. So, and speaking of Valve, mm-hmm. uh, reportedly uh, Microsoft attempted to buy them at a mere one mil, uh, one billion dollars. A mere one billion. <laughs> Come on, Instagram was a billion dollars. Uh, this is Steam, a whole. This is like Steam, or Valve is currently valued at over two billion dollars. Yeah. So they tried to offer them half of what it was worth, to which point Gabe flat out said that the company would dissolve before Microsoft was able to buy it. They said that in the event that they didn't have the money to run the company anymore, which would never, which isn't happening anytime soon. No, no. They would wait until all of their employee contracts are out, and then they would just close the company. He really takes he really takes it personally over there. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, he, he's not not looking to sell anytime soon, or not. It wasn't Microsoft. It was EA. I'm sorry, hmm. EA. And yeah, he's no. Uh, from the chat room, Silent just says that uh, Greenlight also seems to be adding. Ste- uh, I'm sorry, Source Engine mods too. Black Mesa, for instance, is trying to get on there. What's Black Mesa? I mean, I know I know the reference. It's a, but uh, is it another game or a something? Half Life Two mod. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know the specifics of it, but yeah, that's what it is. All right, uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, anything, anything to make the community bigger. They've always been good about supporting that. Oh, it's a remake of Half Life One. I feel like they. I thought they already had like a source version or something like that. I mean, they probably didn't update too much. Um, excellent. Uh, well, okay, so there was a whoops. There was a, a lot of uh, uh, announcements last week, um, and uh, and I know uh, uh, Frank, you've been following them a good bit. Uh, can you tell us? Uh, well, well, was it worth paying attention to? Um, some were, some weren't. Motorola made. I don't know. Motorola is only releasing phones on like the big phones that they announced. The Razer Max HD, the Razer HD, and the Razer M are all Verizon exclusives. So I don't know. I I think they need to bring their headlining phones over to other companies. They mm-hmm. they need to bring the Razers to everyone else. That right there, though, is the headline that is the big takeaway from the Motorola announcement. Okay. And Motorola is offering a $100 credit to anyone who has a Motorola phone. Uh, I'm not sure about the specifics, but I think it's any 2011 model phone that if it's not going to get Jelly Bean, Motorola is going to give you a $100 to upgrade to a new Motorola phone that will be getting Jelly Bean. Wow. That is exactly what every company should be doing. Wow. Yeah, you know, like a brand loyalty kind of thing. That's essentially what it is. You have an old Motorola, it's not going to be supported. You have a new Motorola, also have a discount with it. Yeah. You know, that's uh paying off your users for making a hardware mistake. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's about it. But this is one of those things that's uh not necessarily just because of Motorola, because they have to go through the carriers too, right? Yeah, well, yeah, that's one of the things that um that's part of the reason why 
uh, like the Verizon Galaxy Nexus still hasn't received uh, its Jelly Bean update, um, that Verizon's still just dragging their feet on approving it because they aren't going to make any money off of it. Mm -hmm. So to try to spur that along, I think that it's good that um, the OEMs are taking it kind of into their own hands, like Motorola offering that discount. I think that that's the kind of thing that needs to happen. Yeah, because obviously the uh, the eighteen month window of updates is not working that Google implemented. Yeah, so um, I now, think they should. Fix there is the, one uh, other thing with the uh, with Motorola's <laughs> announcement. Uh, the fact that Google now owns Motorola, they're coming out with these phones that are they're kind of updated versions of their old phones, but they are just getting complete overhauls. Mm -hmm. Sorry, me swatting at flies, but. Um, Nature's against you tonight. Why can't Motorola, which is owned by Google, release a phone that has Jelly Bean out of the box? You know, there was a good conversation about that because uh, when they bought Motorola, wasn't the statement, we're not going to give any, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to give a prefer preferential treatment to Motorola. They're going to be independent. It's kind of like the Facebook Instagram thing that's happening now. They're going to be there. They're just going to be another partner. We just bought a bunch of patents. Um, so... Now we're mad that they're not doing that? Or that they're actually holding up to what they said? I don't know that it's necessarily that... I, I don't know, because it, it's kind of a thin line there. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, they would be getting preferential treatment, but, you know, on the other hand, someone needs to set the example for everyone else. So even if it is Motorola saying, okay, we're coming out with these three new phones that all come with Jelly Bean out of the box, you know, that's... That'll help spur along everyone else to uh, follow suit because, like the um, the Samsung Galaxy S three, mm -hmm. that's not getting Jelly Bean for a while yet. I don't think the European models are supposed to get it until the end of October yet. So that's still off in the distance for them. And and, and and you know, aside from that, we're uh, you know supposedly having an announcement tomorrow as of this recording for an iPhone, and it'll be an iOS update, and it'll be the same day, and everybody can grab it and everybody's upgrade, and everybody's happy. Unless you have an iPad 1 or anything older than a 3GS. That, you know, that, that's the clear line, you know? And it's that, you know, between the two of them. What's, what's the percentage of people that are, like, still on, like, 2.4 at this point? So Oh, oh 2.3? You mean with gingerbread? 2.3, is it? Uh, yeah, it's, it's still something like 40%. <laughs> Yeah, it's ridiculous, and, and those phones are keeping getting sold every day uh, because they're you know a lot a lot of times like the you know the lower end uh, uh, lower end uh, uh, cell cell guys uh, like your crickets and everything. So, uh, so we got your cricket right here. Thanks, Josh. Um, what's going on in Nokia? Or do we care about Windows Phone? Is it? Eh, it's it's nice. Have you played with one? I uh, haven't had a chance to play with it. The the new ones. Are the new ones out to play I play, with? I, I played with one a while ago that was on Windows 7.5. Okay. It's nice. I really like that operating system. I've seen a couple people with them in, it, in the wild, and, and, and it, it is smooth. It does it look is. nice. I like what they're doing with the interface. They just, you know, it, it's great. You know, for somebody that I, I, I really think, you know, without having played with it, 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 it should be the option for people that don't want iPhone but don't want to be saddled with, with Android at this point. Yeah, it's... It is a really nice interface, and I, if if the other OEMs like if Motorola and Samsung come out with Windows phones, I could see that being a really good competitor against iOS and Android because mm -hmm. it is really nice. And the Lumia 920 that was announced, it just looks like a powerhouse phone. It has like all the same kind of specs that uh, all the major Android phones have now. Um, it has the big. I think it's a 1.5 either dual or quad core processor, uh, gig of RAM, 16 or 32 gig hard drives in them or uh, storage in them. Just they're really nice phones, good hardware, and they have excellent cameras. Now Nokia did kind of shoot themselves in the foot with their announcement because their demo video of how good their camera is for video recording wasn't recorded even with a. Um, Whoa, I think I just found it. Wow, that was not hard to find, and I haven't even looked at this video yet. Hold on. Yep, 
Yeah, well, right there. There it is, right there. Here's the problem. In this picture, if you're on the video, and, and I, if I went for my frame, you can get it, but I believe this is the spot. You can see, you know, it's supposed to be, uh, the other shot is, is, is the guy with the camera making this shot, right? But yep. if you watch this window in the background, there's obviously a truck with a camera rig, and I believe it was a DSLR, and, uh, and, and lighting and everything. So this is not a shot. That is not made with any Nokia phone, tablet, or anything of the sort. <laughs> that is with a straight-up camera. Yeah, yeah. So there was a big thing about that. Uh, I believe The Verge was the first that uh, that found that and started uh, uh, pointing it out. And uh, what was Nokia's response? Um, they just apologized. Oh, uh, you cut us. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's pretty much what it was. Uh, uh, oh, shame on us. Here, here's the legitimate thing now. Which was still, like, it was still a good comparison that showed that the stabilization on it is fantastic. But the fact that they had to just go through that awful just PR mess first is, mm -hmm. you know, it, that's just And bad. it's a timing thing. They make these things so far in advance. I'm sure they didn't have a working model and they're like, oh, it should be something like this. So here's our example thing. You know, it just there should have been a disclaimer. Maybe. I'm going to say you have a working model five minutes before your press announcement. Go and do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, um, and the other big announcement last week was the Kindle Fires, plural. Um, the old one, the old one's going to be knocked down to 159 with a spec bump. I, actually, it's not even the same case or anything, right? It's, 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 no, it, it's all new. It, it's all new, uh, but still it, it's being referred to as the old Kindle Fire. I think they even made some comments during the presentation that like the first one kind of was slow and kind of sucked a little bit. Um, but the big ones are going to be like the 199 starts to, uh, you know, like another seven inch HD version, uh, with a new nicer screen. Um, they're going to have a, a 299 version at about, was about around about 10, 9.8 inches. I think it is, uh, 9.7, I believe 9.7. So not quite as big as an iPad. And of course, 499 for the 4g version. That's AT&T 4g. And you can get a whole 250 megabytes a month. For fifty dollars a year. Wait, I thought that was the uh, paper white that had that. No, that is the L the LTE version, the five hundred dollar LTE version. That's the deal. The that good thing you have LTE, so you can burn through that in like twenty seconds. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, <laughs> I I don't. Okay, great, but yeah, you're definitely not taking advantage of LTE at that. But I can see like normal people that are using the thing to check their email but are they going to realize don't watch your amazon video yeah on this thing yeah so now now here's the big thing that came out that they did an announce this at the press announcement which i don't know i kind of think they should have but i can see why they didn't the entire new kindle lineup down to the cheapest of the kindles up to your 500 dollar 4g Kindle Fire HD are all ad supported. Yeah, and this is new, right? I mean, they, they, they but didn't... here's the thing: I've been thinking about this. The thing that they're pushing with the uh, with all the Kindles, the full range, is that they're for Amazon media consumption. Mm -hmm. Which you know, if something's on sale, tell me. So I don't know. Like, I could actually see liking that because yeah if a book that i'm thinking about getting shows up on my lock screen as being on sale I'm, chances are i'm gonna go buy it if it's on sale then i mean that's really what happens when i go to amazon.com it's not like you're not already going to get this at amazon.com yeah so it, it just kind of facilitates the reason you bought this and this really is just kind of a gateway for more amazon things for you to buy yeah essentially it's a mobile storefront yeah but yeah uh, like, I don't know. I, I can see why they withheld it, but I don't know. If they would have presented it right, I don't think it would have gotten, like, the, the big negative connotation that came out whenever everyone found out, oh, all of the Kindles are now ad-supported. Like, then it was just like this big, oh, well, why is that? That's, no. But if they would have presented it in a way that would have made it look like, hey, you'll like this, you'll thank us, you may think it's annoying, but it's actually a good thing, I think that... uh I think it would have went over a little smoother there. Mm -hmm. As you say, you can get they did they did announce like about uh, twenty four hours yeah. later you can get rid of the ads for fifteen dollar fee fifteen dollar fee and we won't do any more ads, which I don't think was the original plan. 
Like it was a re- it was the backlash that that, that had yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, so you know we're great on them for the reaction. It, it kind of makes sense because uh, all the reports on this thing uh, for how much it is for the manufacturer. I think the first Kindle Fire they were losing about fifty dollars per unit. So they're selling you this thing at a loss. So you will buy more stuff from them. Yeah. So it, it, it makes sense as far as that, and this is different than like something like the iPad where. Uh, they make money off the iPad right out the gate. You know, that's why there's a premium on that. And that they're not, they, they have the iTunes store to sell more iPads. So that's why more stuff, you know, um, but I mean, it definitely looks a lot more capable. I I still kind of go with it as the, this is the one I want to pass out to people that I don't have the tech support because it really kind of locks down the stuff you would be worried about. It's just a consumption, I'm sorry, a consumption of device. Yeah, and so. the thing that they did uh, bring out with the new Kindles, um, which will make it the very family-friendly device, you can switch it to a kids' mode that locks out anything that you did not approve to be accessible by the kids. So only the apps on there that you want them to see. Like, if if you wanted to put Dead Trigger on there, which I think Amazon won't let you put on there, but, like, anything along those lines, um, you can just uh, have it so that your kids aren't able to see that and you'll know that it's in the kids mode from across the room because it's a bright blue screen. So it's an easy way for the parents to keep tabs on the younger kids who are using the tablet. And, and, pro- and it probably also locks them out of purchasing anything, right? Yes. So this is the answer for anybody that got burned by letting their kid use the iPad and getting a hundred dollars of Smurf berries, uh, tacked onto their account Ooh, to deal with so berries. um it's great that they're kind of addressing that issue and making it more friendly uh and, and i noticed uh, uh they very explicitly kept android out of any conversation whatsoever with this device so um kind of along those lines there were some other stories uh some some lesser stories last last week uh two other android tablets that are also taking kind of a different uh line on this chachi i don't know uh what? i think I don't think you guys reported on this this week. Tell me if I'm wrong here. Uh, but GameStop, we, we've been talking, we've been hearing about it for months now. Uh, but the WikiPad gaming tablet will be headed to, to GameStop. It's a uh, 4.99 at the U.S. Uh, outlets. It's a uh, 10.1 inch capacitive multi screen. Mul- I'm sorry, multi touch screen. Yeah, um, and uh, it'll be able to. Uh, uh, it says it, it says a. Uh, uh, Full suite of games delivered by the latest video game platforms, including uh, PlayStation Mobile, NVIDIA's Tegra Zone, Google Play, as well as several upcoming unannounced platforms. I think Gaikai might be a part of this too, right? Yeah, I think I think Gaikai is a part of this. Um, so if you see in the picture, it's basically a tablet, and it kind of slides into a giant peripheral to give you real buttons. It's kind of like Optimus Prime putting on that jetpack in... Uh in the Transformers We movies. were just talking about that last week. Really? Yeah, yeah. We, we've been watching Transformers 3 before the podcast, like about uh, 20 minutes to a half an hour at a time uh, as we as we wait to get set up. We equated it to, like, uh, watching a movie in school. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, so, I mean, what do you... Okay, yeah, it's GameStop, but do you think people are going to latch on this? I don't know, for four ninety nine. No, I mean, I mean, it'd be one thing, you know. Okay, so if they got Gaikai and PlayStation Mobile, that's some brand name stuff, but this just feels like another Nokia engage to me. Exactly. Yeah. Failure. Here, here here's on. the problem with that. It it costs about twenty to thirty dollars to get a tablet stand, and it costs fifty dollars to get a PlayStation Three control that's Bluetooth compatible with pretty much any tablet. So there's seventy to eighty dollars. You can are you it? That or you're going to spend five hundred on, you know, the gargantuan thing, or buy a uh, or buy a Google uh, uh, again. It's smaller, but go, go get a, a Nexus Seven and uh, throw OnLive on there. Buy their controller, which is probably like fifty, sixty bucks, and you have those games too. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. It, it's it. This seems like a pretty over WikiPad. Who the hell's WikiPad? That's your first thing. I, I, it's not even by somebody. If you're like, you know, Sai was like Motorola or something, at least like a brand, you know, you could trust a little bit. Uh, I, I guess that's why they need GameStop to kind of get a little more legitimacy. On the other end of that is this one that Toys R Us is apparently putting out there. Uh, uh, this seems like it's a Toys R Us exclusive um, called uh, the... 
pull it up there. And it looks it looks green and plastic and safe for your kids. Is it called the Jeffrey? It's called <laughs> No, <laughs> the Tabio? Wow. Uh, it's a one uh one forty nine ninety nine. It's uh it's gonna uh, it, include uh Angry Birds, Temple Run, Fruit Ninja, Cut the Rope, Collapse, stuff like that. Uh it's locked down. It's running ice cream sandwich, Frank. Right off the bat, so at least it should be. you know better than most that you hear that are getting locked down like this. Um, you can limit the amount of time that the kids spend online, set access codes for specific days of the week, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So a real you know kid friendly version of this, and they, and this you know kind of like what we're talking about with the the kid friendly uh, aspect for uh, Amazon's Kindle. Uh, that you know everybody's really kind of latching onto this after what we hear about with the uh, iOS ice cream sandwiches. Um, so iOS uh, six has a kid friendly feature built into it. They do, they do too. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's something in there. They kind of needed to after after the controversy that they came up with it. So mm-hmm. they were the focus of it. So um, good, good. Um, so that's when they got tablet wise. Uh, what else is going on? You guys want to talk about here? I got a few stories lined up. Hey, now that we're pretty well into this, yes. you know, just the way uh, Google reacted with um, you know NFL starting and all. Not that it's you know the largest grossing sport in the u.s or anything like that Mm -hmm. um it wasn't until uh today that they pushed the update to google now that would let football scores show up in your google now cards really yeah well they're a bunch of geeks at google they're not thinking about that apparently they knew (laughs) about the bug for a while and they've just been fighting with it just trying to get it corrected and they unfortunately for them they couldn't get it fixed until after all of the uh, first week festivities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Twitter. This is a rumor that's going around. I, well, Mac rumors. I presume it's just a rumor. Twitter reportedly discontinuing development of official Twitter app for Mac. Yay! We the have- funny thing about this being on Mac rumors is that even though Mac rumors is like a rumor site, quote unquote, they don't actually post rumors. They stay away from rumors as much as possible. What a misnomer. Um, yeah, it was, it was something from somebody inside on the dev team or something like that. Yeah. But what are it's, they? Uh, yeah. I forget who it's from. So, it's an important name. So if you have the article there. The name is important. Oh, the name is important. <laughs> the name of the person that reported it is very important. Uh, I'll bring it up here. I'm looking at it. Um, so what, what the hell are you supposed to do if you're on the Mac? Yeah, that's why this is like a weird thing. I feel like it's a misunderstanding. Standing. Like, I feel like th- like somebody actually said those words, but it's a misunderstanding of like, the context that it was in. Yeah. Um, because it doesn't make it any sense. Because, I mean, it, it, it's a significant platform. You guys are on the App Store. They, they don't say it's going away. They just say they're not going to develop for it. And as much as they keep making changes and or not making changes on apps, it seems, feels like they really need to keep up with it. It's from uh, M.G. Siegler. M.G. Siegler. Okay, that's a, that's a pretty big one. Yeah. Um said uh quote unquote word is it is that twitter made the call today twitter for mac is done they won't kill it outright but no further updates goodbye old friends so i'd say that if this is in fact a true thing it means that something else is coming in its place because killing the mac client for um os x is is just like they're the twitter client for os x is like just a just a crazy talk thing so it might just be that in future versions of um of ios and os x that twitter is built into the operating system like it already is mm-hmm. with like uh, uh the multimodal sign-on stuff where like facebook is built in twitter is built in so that's probably what it is. yeah yeah it's not like you won't be able to use an application ever well again. you 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 can always you can always use the website because that works out so well um well that's where all the features are so i guess it kind of makes sense so um yeah uh so 20% of the U.S. can't watch online video. That's actually not bad, if you think about it. Hmm. Uh, there actually was a report by the FCC re- uh, released recently. Uh, they actually said that half of American households were unable to watch you know, a significant video online. Uh, but another group 
uh, came back out. Uh, the Wist- Wistia is the name of them. And they put together a, a different viewing report that gives a little more color to the status of the connection speeds and the ability to stream content in the U.S. Uh, the problem with the FCC map, it only tells part of it. Just It says that its data comes from theoretical speeds, not what users are actually experiencing. So I guess the numbers got a little more slanted. Uh, according to the report from that Wistia did, 20% of all views in the U.S. are viewers... That's a, that's a typo. In the U.S. are unable to seamlessly stream HD content. Uh, hotel internet connections fail to stream HD 61% of the time. Does that sound about right there, Rob? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I think AJ can attest to that, too. So, um, what else we got here? The 25 well-established companies examined in a study were only able to seamlessly stream HD video 25% of the time. Hmm. And uh, the Northeast had the best percentage of HD capital views, capable views. That's, we're in there. We slide in there. I mean, it's a, streaming video is still like a funny thing where like all of us here are perfectly capable of, capable of getting a streaming video to work, but it's a daily occurrence that like you go to a YouTube page and it doesn't load right and you have to, yeah. you know, you tap the address bar, hit enter again, yeah. or you hit pause and then you drag the slider and then it works like it's still kind of a weird clutchy thing and no matter what service you're on whether it's hulu netflix vimeo youtube it's like video on computers is still hard it's you know i i don't typically have problems with hulu i don't typically have problems with netflix even though it was loading really really slow today for some reason um what i usually have issues with is youtube when yeah, i yeah youtube that's where i have all my issues too because it, it, well, I watch. Um, I'll tend to watch uh, WWE SmackDown uh, every week on there when they post it, and uh, I watch it through the YouTube app on the Xbox. I am anything on there. Like it seems like it seems like it might be from certain channels. So maybe it's something they're doing in, in the compression and what they're putting up there. Because we watch our stuff, it doesn't skip at all. If I watch some other stuff like SourceFed, it doesn't skip at all. WWE stuff is consistently. I'm coming. You know, it, it keeps pausing and going, and I can't adjust anything on the Xbox side of things. Even just you know, I have a. a mac uh hooked up upstairs uh in the living room and i just you know sometimes i'll just bring up the youtube on there and even then they'll go up to 720p which i know netflix will do just fine um or at least it's not noticeable when they start dipping them out and they'll start pausing you know and i'll start turning into the same situation i'm finding uh on the xbox i don't know if it's just youtube if it's it if it is like wwe's doing something weird with the videos or other people doing weird, something weird with their videos um but it I, you know, I have Fios. We're doing all this. I have plenty of bandwidth. I know I have plenty of bandwidth, and I'm still having an issue with this. So, um, That's like me, because I have Fios. I have 25 up, 25 down. Yeah. And if I know that the only device that's using the internet is my computer, and I'm just trying to watch something on YouTube, and it just lags. That's like uh, whenever I was showing you guys the Jim Connor videos the other day, mm-hmm. and it was just okay play a minute and wait <laughs> and play a minute and wait and you just see the car just sitting there halfway underneath the tractor trailer right before it blows up and you're waiting and it's the only thing that's using the internet yeah yeah i mean well i, I wonder because we're out so was like you know how was no no the, your wi-fi was fine out there yeah, yeah, full it, bars, no problem. I'm having a little bit of that issue here. But yeah, I have two Wi-Fi access points. The only problem there is sometimes you get lashed here, on the one that's I've, on the other I've side been, of the house. I've been sitting in the same spot this entire show, and it's mm-hmm. been working fine. Yeah. Not that we can tell, because you're really dark right now. Um, you need a spotlight out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's actually going for it. <laughs> Rob, I think this next one's yours, uh, judging by the subject matter. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about bike safety? Um, oh, I, I put that in there. Oh, no. oh, that wasn't you. You threw me there. Nope. I wasn't sure if Rob saw that. I figured he'd be interested in that. Okay. What's going on? Uh, didn't really read much on it, but I think that what it's supposed to do is it's a little sensor you attach to your helmet, and uh, whenever bad things happen, it automatically notifies your uh, ICE contacts. Oh, wow. That's yeah. really cool until you drop your helmet. Yeah, that that's true. Or like somebody sort of knocks into you, or you walk through a door frame and it hits the frame. Not that I'm bashing the project, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to give it an F minus like from the start. Product. Was that Frank? You're being robbed. Oh, like Chachi. Sorry, Chachi's mic was down. Oh. 
It, well, it sounds like to me that you're bashing the project. I, m I might be bashing the project just a little. Bit. Or I mean, it's a cool idea, but awful, awful, awful educate like execution. And I'm not even sure that with what we have currently available, as far as like sensors and things like that, that there is a, a, an execution of this that is not foolproof. Mm. Pretty That's much. true. Because even if you say I that mean, it has to reach some certain amount of uh, of velocity or acceleration to trigger the sensor what's to say that that's just not you dropping your helmet yet you know you could just make a turn the wrong way and just fall gently but still twist your knee horrendously and not hit your head at all yeah i mean i can sit uh, on a daily ride i guarantee that i simulate the conditions of me flying off of my bike as far as like g-forces coming to a sudden stop setting my helmet on my desk is considered like traumatic g-force you know um, so. There's a actually a, kind of kind of to a little more in this article here, uh, according to Gizmodo, and to avoid false positives, since there's always a chance of a dropped helmet could be uh, misconstrued as a, misconstrued as a nasty tumble. The app actually indicates an emergency countdown, which can be manually aborted in the event nothing actually happened. And I'm sure everybody is totally going to remember that and press whatever stupid non-functional button is involved in triggering <laughs> it, it's like it's like the uh the security system that i completely never had uh uh the cops come to accidentally a uh, cat go in front of a sensor that was supposed to be out of reach or i didn't get to it in time or whoever like, did anytime it. anybody has ever yeah. left their lights on on their car exactly exactly interesting idea maybe a little more needs done with it for it to be accessible there um what time is it let's uh let, you, know, you know we'll touch on this a little bit i wasn't sure if we, we could get into this uh too much uh this week this may be more of an ongoing discussion uh but there was an article that was tweeted to us by uh, at the jqs mr sanders out there uh interesting what say you awesome cassie says uh for this uh the the, the headlines university researchers uncover uncover uh Sorry, uh, the full-scale weaknesses of the monitoring of illegal file, file shares. Uh, some stuff they found uh, uh, from this was uh, massive monitoring of all the popular illegal downloads uh, from the Pirate Bay has been uh, taking place over the last three years. On average, an illegal file share using BitTorrent to download the most popular content will be connected to and have their IP address logged within three hours of starting the download. Okay. Uh, the other way. Poor collection methods mean that the evidence collected by monitors may not stand up in court. So we've been doing all this, but it may not freaking matter. Yeah. Plus, you know, plus the issue of an IP address is not a person you can't sue it, which has been the blanket uh, argument of the RAA. Uh, I think they got struck down sometime last year uh, with, with, with that kind of practice. Well, maybe they should stop suing grandma. Just throwing it out there. Yeah, they're, they're, they're still doing it. needs her Gangnam style. <laughs> oh, boy. Just, just let Grandma have her Gangnam style. That's all uh, she wants. Stop mm. suing Grandma. It's unfortunate. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, 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 is that it? Uh, is, so, is that the show title? Stop suing Grandma? Stop suing Grandma? <laughs> that might be it. Um... All right. Well, on that point, I think that's all I got here this week. You guys have anything else we want to throw out there before we head out of here? Uh, Fuzz has a an event that Insert Coin to Begin is uh, working on. Yes, yes. I've seen, I saw some tweets going out earlier this week. Fuzz. That's a handoff. Fuzzy. Can are you with us? <laughs> Something's moving. Something's moving. How about Chachi uh, tells you about it until Frank comes back? Okay. Uh, uh, most of the team over at hey, Insert... I'm losing my feet, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, Chachi's uh, going to handle it. Insert coin to begin. Most of the team over I'm losing my feet. on the website is uh, participating in Extra Life um, this year. And you can find out more about it at, at insertcointobegin.com. Um, Extra Life is a, a, a gaming marathon... That um, may sound familiar, but uh, basically they uh, they collect donations and the donations go to children's hospitals. Excellent, excellent. And uh, where can they go to find out more information? Insertcointobegin.com. Excellent. 
So go check that out. Uh, there's some other stuff going on in the area here. I, I have listed tomorrow night if you're in the Pittsburgh area. I will be on a social media panel where I'll talk about social media with some other people. Um, that's uh, the PodCamp Pittsburgh PYP event. Uh, Wednesday at uh, 5.30 p.m. down in the Strip District. I go to podcamppittsburgh.com to get more information. I'll also be teaching a Google Plus intro session, another one of those, uh, going out to Carnegie Library main branch. Again, if you're in the area, go to carnegielibrary.org. I think there's still seats available for that. What's uh, Google Plus? Google Plus. What is it and why should you care? Also, tomorrow at, I believe it's 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, we're going to be tag teaming uh, myself and uh, Uncle Crappy, uh, Mike Pound over there at the Beaver, Beaver County Times. We might be posted on there again as well uh, we're going to do a, a full out uh google hangout on air kind of situation uh and uh cover the announcement uh and what's going on there and uh, i think aj may be uh joining us as well uh that you guys all know from this show and anybody else if any any, any awesome casters or anything anybody else uh that wants to join us uh you know just drop me an email uh, or tweet me at Sorgatron on Twitter, and uh, we'll we'll see what we can do, and we'll get a list together of people interested to talk iPhone with us. Um, no swearing, no swearing. We'll be on the Times website. Um, I don't know why I have to say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> why you have to say no swearing? I don't know. No swearing. Yeah, you know, I don't. I know let why you have to know say because that. I'm inviting more people. And well, no, and you, you have like to that. say it because yes. uh, the people interested in talking about iPhones are nerds. Mm-hmm. And despite the popular belief that people who use swear words are um, less articulated than other people, case in point, that's not true. Mm-hmm. Uh, some we just prefer using swear words involving technology or stupid things being done in the nerd kingdom. <laughs> They're still talking about the the, the, the their co-hosts are still talking about the. Uh, about the uh, helmet here in the chat room. <laughs> do, you, do you want to update, update us on that, Rob and Frank? Uh, well, a couple people were just talking about the hypotheticals of how it could work and how it might not work. And what I had mentioned was recently um, a group of girls in what I think was Finland had developed a bicycle helmet that will inflate in the event of an unexpected ejection. And they actually went through crash testing and all of the federal regula- regulations and that sort of thing, uh, at least for their country, that would require it for it to be uh, a legitimately used safety device. And it's awesome except for the fact that it costs like $800 because the tech is so new and so rare. And there's also a, a, um, a jacket that you can wear on your motorcycle that is it's super simple because it just has uh, basically like a D-ring on the jacket that's uh, connected to a safety wire that's connected to your motorcycle. So you have to remember to clip in on clip, but in the event that you are thrown off of your motorcycle, your jacket will inflate like a giant airbag. Nice. Yeah. So there you go. Excellent. Uh, Frank, you back with us? Yeah. Excellent. I, yeah, I turned off my video because it was saying about a bandwidth issue. So, and, but you do look better. So, um, oh, excellent. Uh, okay. What's that? I've been working out. <laughs> Frank Chenoweth, he's a writer over there at InsertCoinToBegin.com. He's at Fuzzwad on Twitter if you want to get at him there. Uh, anything coming up? Uh, of course, we talked a little bit about your charity here uh, while we are having the connection problems with you. Uh, anything else you want to throw out there? Here's your chance. Um, no, just keep checking out uh, Insert Coin to Begin. Great news source. Uh, that's quite honestly like not to be vain or anything, but that's where I go to find out about video games anymore. <laughs> <laughs> let everybody else be your filter robjdlc.com is where rob's at and uh go check out the fine fine website over there and the really cool stuff at iontank.com yeah i gotta remember to start a tour gotta remember to yeah i got to visit the 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 facility the the home base it was magical did you see you, rob's you seemed a little like off stricken you didn't say much I didn't say much because I'm like, I'm like a kid. And this is like my Toys R Us, you know? It's I, what I'm trying not to touch everything because everything's freaking made of glass, uh, for one thing. Um, and I really wanted to play the pinball machine. Uh, but we'd Why be there all day. Why didn't you play the pinball because machine? Because we'd be there all day. I didn't want to keep Rob oh. as it was, you know? You know, so. Uh, hey, they have the pinball machine. I'm sure they don't mind you playing the pinball machine. <laughs> What the hell is your problem? It's Terminator 2 Judgment Day. I don't care. It's awesome. It's one of the first ones with those little video LCD things going on. Wow. You failed. It, it was the first pinball ma- machine with a video game built into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it has yeah, the shotgun trigger, which is my favorite. 
<laughs> awesome. Anything you want to throw out there? Actually, you know, hey, uh, we're you know how we uh, always talk about in uh, the uh, what is it the MS one fifty that you do that bikes up the Erie? Sure. Yeah. Actually, uh, was uh, working with somebody yesterday that does the same thing. I have to get you the mm-hmm. name there. Um, maybe maybe it's somebody you ride up with. Nice. So small world, and also Chachi at Chachi says on the Twitters. Insert coin to begin dot com as well. Not Brian Snyder. What the hell? What's that doing what in there? What are you doing? What is that doing in there? You are fired. I didn't press that earlier, did I? I second Ch- uh, but Rob's. I almost said Chachi. <laughs> I, I, I second my own comment. I second Rob's firing of you. Oh, oh, that's sad. That's sad. Man. Oh. How many weeks have I spent on second. this couch in this spot? So some fired. How can they reach us? I, I don't know. Hey. They won't reach the awesome cast. They'll reach the uh, fancy dot com exclusive <laughs> that you and I start. You can uh, check us out at awesomecast.com. You can reach us at Twitter at awesomecast. You can find us or you can email us. We like emails. Contact at awesomecast.com. We're on the Facebook, the Google Plus, the Twitters. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes. Like us. Let us know what you think and tell your friends. And send us pastries. And you can also join us every Tuesday. Yes, you can join us every Tuesday, right here, round about seven o'clock, live dot dot com, with our fancy new chat room. There it is. There it is. Go check it out. Uh, so with that, for the guys, I am Sorg. Uh, you can check me out, MikeSorg.com. Uh, for the chat room, you've been awesome all night with our awesome new chat room. Go check that out. Uh, thank you. You've been our awesome audience. He Have an Sorg. awesome week. If you go to the site, hey, it should work. But basically, basically, Rob has to scan a QR code, which is going to piss him off because he Take hates, out my, because uh, he hates QR codes. I can't wait for this. Oh, I fucking oh, don't even <laughs> uh, QR codes. Oh, the irony! It's funny. I have a passing distaste for them. You know what has QR codes? My inventory system at work. You know why? Because it's a fucking barcode. Don't put it on your cereal box, asshole. Just give me the link to your fucking website. It's not that hard. <laughs> oh, hard. wait, let me let me download the app so I can take a shitty picture five times to get it to read the QR code so it can open a browser on my behalf to go to your shitty website that I didn't want to see in the first place and probably has Flash anyway, so it's not going to load. Thanks for the user experience. Yes, You're I'm swell. Okay. Frank. Jesus. Where's Frank? Frank? Oh, no, my iPad's dead. Uh-oh. Oh, shenanigans. Uh-oh. Um, SpaghettiOs. Uh, BRB. BRBs? LOL, meatloaf. <laughs> that was actually me. He found a penis in the woods. Here, Here is him discovering goats. Wait, I thought this team was... There he is. Oh, have you seen the screaming goat? Yes. It popped up oh, in the hangout so- last night. <laughs> my uh, my developer said it as his text tone for me. Mm-hmm. It's great because we'll be it'll be like dead quiet in the studio, and then I'll send him a text message. Ah! Ah! Here's Chachi as the as the uh, sheep whisper. <laughs> uh, uh, Michael Sorg, did you see the silent ninjas comment in the chat room? In the chat room, I sent a shorter version of email. Please read that one instead. I do have that. <laughs> That's all.